Welcome to the introduction to mathematical proofs. The goal of a proof is to show that if P, then Q is true, meaning that given some premises, we can make a conclusion about something. From a logical perspective, there are many ways to do so. Here's a summary of common proof methods. First, we have the direct proof method. For this form of proof, we assume P, explain, 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 therefore Q is true. A direct proof takes the form of if P, then Q. Next, we have proof by contrapositive. For this type of proof, we assume not Q, explain, 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 therefore not P. Proof by contrapositive takes the form of if not Q, then not P. We also have proof by contradiction. For this type of proof, we assume not P, explain, 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 therefore Q is definitely false, so P must be true. Proof by contradiction takes the form of if not P, then Q, where Q is false. We also have proof by cases. In this situation, there are only a limited number of cases, for example, odd and even, and we can split the overall proof into smaller proofs, one for each case. We also have proof by counterexample. This is a valid proof method for, this is a valid proof method for existential statements. Otherwise, examples cannot serve as a proof. And finally, in an earlier section, we talked about proof by induction. For proof by induction, we are given P of n, and we assume P of k is true, then we show P of zero and P of the quantity k plus one are both true. Anyone who doesn't believe there is creativity in mathematics clearly has not tried to write proofs. Finding a way to convince the world that a particular statement is necessarily true is a mighty undertaking and can often be quite challenging. Providing examples is not a proof. In a proof, we need to show something is true for all cases. There is not a guaranteed path to success in the search for proofs. For example, in the summer of 1742, a German mathematician by the name of Christian Goldbach wondered whether every even integer greater than two could be written as the sum of two primes. Centuries later, we still don't have a proof of this apparent fact. Computers have checked that Goldbach's conjecture holds for all numbers less than four times 10 to the power of 18, which still leaves infinitely many more numbers to check. Remember, providing examples is not a proof. Writing proofs is a bit of an art. Like any art, to be truly great at it, you need some sort of inspiration as well as some foundational technique. Just as musicians can learn proper fingering and painters can learn the proper way to hold a brush, we can look at proper ways to construct arguments. In the next several videos, we'll take a look at each proof type in detail but before we go, let's look at a basic example of a direct proof. To prove if P then Q is true by direct proof, again we assume P, explain, 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 therefore Q is true. Direct proofs take the form of if P then Q. Direct proofs are a great approach when proving universal statements that can be manipulated algebraically. As an example, let's prove that all integers n, if n is odd, then n squared is odd. We begin by assuming P is true, meaning N is odd, which means we can begin by letting N equal 2K plus one be an arbitrary odd number with any integer K. Notice any multiple of two is going to be an even number and any even number plus one is odd. Then N squared is equal to the square of the quantity 2K plus one. If we multiply this out, this is equal to 4K squared plus 4K plus one, but 4K squared plus 4K is even since 4k squared plus 4k is equal to two times the quantity 2k squared plus 2k, and one is odd. Any even number plus one is always odd, therefore we have our conclusion, 4k squared plus 4k plus one equals n squared is odd, and the proof is complete. I hope you found this helpful.